Hi, let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new. Today's video is going to be kind of a new series on my channel. It's going to be like a new Q&A series that I want to call Sip and Spill. And basically I've seen a lot of other creators do this, whether they do it with coffee or a matcha or a cocktail. And I feel like sip and spill is pretty like neutral. So we can kind of go by however we're feeling. Right now, I figured I would do a mid afternoon spritz. It's kind of fitting with the theme of today's topic, which is my engagement. Um, so I left you guys a little questionnaire box on Instagram and I said you can ask me any kind of questions related to the engagement. Um, and our engagement party was actually Aperol spritz theme. You guys, I have so much leftover Aperol that I was like, listen, it's it's only right that we use some of it up for this particular Q&A. So let me get into the questions with you guys. I'm so excited to be talking about this. Um, lately, it's probably all I've been talking about. I feel like my friends are probably really sick of me by now, but you know what? You only hopefully get engaged once, so I'm gonna roll with it. Okay, coming in hot with the first question, when are you getting married and where are you moving to? So we don't have a 100% set date, but we're looking at a two year engagement. Um, number one being the fact that we are moving and I'll get to that in like one second. Um, but we are moving and we are looking to buy a home first and we don't wanna just either be renting or be living um, separately. I'm gonna get into all of this, you guys will understand in a minute. When we get married, we wanna really be in our hopefully forever home when we um, decide to tie the knot. So we're getting married in our tentative date is September, 2024. I'm also really grateful right now because I'm feeling the pressure of wedding planning right now. I am seeing everybody and their mother get married, whether it be people who just recently got engaged during COVID or people who got engaged before COVID and they're finally having the chance to get married. So it seems like everything's Booking up everything's tripling in price like everything is going wedding bonkers right now and i'm like as much as i'm experiencing fomo and i like can't wait to get to that part of my life i'm also very very excited um for this engagement period and to take it kind of slow and not really stress so much about wedding planning right now and have everything that i possibly want for the wedding be able to happen because i'm not rushing it at the same time it is a little bit daunting because i change my mind so much Luckily, I'm going for very minimal and very classic and very like elegant and timeless in my opinion. Um, but I was even looking at my Pinterest board from last year and I was like, holy shit, this is so gaudy. I would literally never do this now. And again, it's like everybody has different tastes, but like this was my own personal taste last year. And now I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh my God. So even now I'm like two years out from the wedding. I don't even know that I can plan it because I'm scared that I'm gonna like make a decision on something and then be like, no, 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 no. I don't even want this anymore. So I'm gonna do like bare bones stuff as soon as I can, like booking a venue and all of that. Cause I know that those go fast and you really have to like be on top of it. But aside from that, I don't really know. Um, and where are we moving to? We are moving back to Massachusetts. I said this in a recent vlog. Um, this whole chapter of our lives came about really, really fast. It was crazy. Like Frankie's boss offered him a position in New England two days before he proposed to me. And I didn't even know that he was gonna propose, but I had this like gut feeling when he told me about it. We were about to fly home to visit our parents and for him to propose. And he told me about it actually on the Uber ride to LAX. And he was like, I don't want to tell you this now, but like it just kind of came up in conversation and he spilled the tea and something in my soul was like, yes, let's just do it. Even though I don't necessarily feel ready to leave LA and I'm not like gung ho about living in Massachusetts. I just know that being with family during this time is like going to be the most important thing and the most memorable thing. And like our friends aren't going anywhere. You know what I mean? Like we will see our friends. All of our friends are like spread across the entire United States, but we have a ton of friends here in LA and we can come and visit them at any time. They can come visit us. But you know, with parents getting older and like our family being so important to us, I felt like it was the right decision to make. And then a few days later, he literally proposed to me and now we're like saving for our house and all of this stuff. So it's gonna be really interesting. And I think that like, it's gonna be a fun transition into vlogs back home in my mom's house, um, which gets me into another part, um, which was another question of like, what are you guys gonna do when you move back? Um, we are going to be living, which is going to be weird. Our first year of our engagement, we are going to be living separately. He's going to be living with his parents and I'm going to be living with my parents. Uh, reason being is we don't necessarily want to start our home. We want a forever home or at least 
forever-ish for like the next, I don't know, I would say like 10 years maybe. Um, we want a home where we could have at least three bedrooms for us and then three bedrooms for hopefully God willing children. Um, so like we don't want to just like come back, buy a house instantly, rush it right now, especially when the market is absolutely insane. Um, we would rather like wait, find the perfect home and there's really no rush and for us to come back and rent. Um, even though it would be cheaper than renting in California, renting in Massachusetts is still spending money to basically do nothing. So um, it's going to be like our last final year to basically be children and before we have to like get married, not have to, but before we get married, before we buy a house, before we really settle down and settle into adulthood, this will be our last chance to like have mom and dad cook three meals, well for him mom and dad, for me just mom, um, cook three meals for us and like, I don't know, kind of date each other again and I think it's, it's going to be tough because we've lived together for so long now that um, it, it feels normal and it's like all we know and I feel like it's like the uh, obviously the logical next step in our relationship but I think in a in a sense it'll be really interesting to kind of date each other again and miss each other and especially before diving into marriage like it will be really nice to miss each other and like you know get to date and get to spend time with each other and have sleepovers like it'll feel like we're kids again and you know you lose that when you like settle down and stuff so it's gonna be kind of fun. I'm gonna take it as a positive. I'm in this phase of my life where I'm taking everything as a positive and I'm trying to be like the most chipper, happy-go-lucky person in the world. Like something goes wrong and I'm like, yeah, it's fine. It's a learning experience. It's good for the plot. Everything will be great. Like, yes, would I love to live with Frank back home in Massachusetts right off the bat? Yes, but am I going to take this in the most positive way I can? Yes, I also am, so cheers to that. Okay, next question comes from Linda. She wants to know, did you and Frank take a break a while back? He was missing from your videos for a while. And then there was a similar question um, where somebody said, did you take a break from your, did taking a break from your significant other help your relationship? So I kind of want to answer those both. Yes, we did take a break. We have taken multiple breaks. I'm very candid with you guys. Like Frank was my first love when I was 17. We've been together for when I, I'm turning 27 next month. We would have been together for almost 10 years at that point. Yes, we have taken breaks. We have gone through every phase together, basically from like adolescence for me, um, young adolescence, to college phase, to moving across the country, to finding yourself. And I'm not gonna tell you that it was hunky-dory the whole time, like no. But I do think there's something to be said about your person and understanding that and coming into that after having experienced other things and knowing that that person is right for you. You know what I mean? As much as I wish that we hadn't taken those breaks, like part of me wishes that, just so we could be like, oh yeah, we've been together all 10 years. No, we haven't, but you know what? I'm also glad that we've had those times to be apart to know what it really feels like when we're together and to know what we're missing when we're not together. Um, so I don't regret anything. I'm really happy that life happened the way that it did. Again, like I said, as corny as this sounds, like our love always brought us back together. Like both of us could never just not always come back to each other. And it wasn't like, a, oh, it's just like, it's just my toxic ex or it's, oh, it's just comfortable. It was like, we always like had this, like something that was drawing us into each other. And you know, when you know it's right, you just know it's right. But at least we were able to confirm. So yes, I do think it really helped. I think sometimes when you're forcing it and you feel like you're pushing something and you aren't sure, I think it's really important, especially if you're young. This might be different at whatever stage you're in with your relationship or, you know, the age that you're at or the point of your life that you're at or, you know, however long you guys have been seeing each other. But I think for a lot of us, like I said, especially if you're young, um, it is important to like see your life without that person and see what it's like and be able to choose that person because you're choosing them and not because you feel like you're comfortable or you feel like you're in a rut or you feel like there's no one else out there for you. You want to find a partner that's truly right for you and fits into your lifestyle and makes you feel loved and you love them back because you're choosing them and not just because, again, all of those other things that I said before. Um, and I think that, you know, young relationships or long-term relationships can really like cloud a lot of people's judgment and I wanted to be 100% sure, and I think he did too, that we were doing this for all the right reasons and this is gonna be once and for all and forever. So I think we've done that. Okay, next question. How will you be prepping for wedding day? Hair, facials, diet, all the fun stuff. So since I have two years to prep, I'm not doing anything crazy. Like I, you guys, my crazy days are behind me. I'm very like, I'm this chill girl. Like it's been chill girl summer. I'm very like, 
no stress, like non-restrictive. I don't want to be bridezilla in any capacity. Like I don't want to be like crash dieting two weeks before my wedding or like doing a million procedures, getting my hair done, nails done, everything. Like of course there's going to be like crunch time things that you get done, but I don't want to have to feel like I need to do a whole 180 the month before my wedding. I have two months, two months, two years to really like feel like my absolute best self. And I think that that is a way that I can do it in the way that is going to be the healthiest version of me. Um, I don't plan on doing anything crazy uh, in terms of like workouts and diet and stuff. I'm basically, it's gonna be a very different lifestyle back home. Like we're not gonna have every like insane restaurant at our fingertips. Like I walk outside of my house and I have every new pop in restaurant in LA at my fingertips. Like it, it's just insane. The, the lifestyle here is so different. I like, especially because I feel like I'm kind of in vacation mode these last two months that we live here. And like, I want to say yes to all the opportunities to spend time with loved ones and be with my friends and have fun and live like the last little bit of LA to its fullest. I'm really less focused on prioritizing health and fitness and that's just a phase of my life that I'm in and I'm trying not to beat myself up about it. My mental health is at an all-time high so let me tell you that like I'm I'm having a grand old time. Physically I probably could feel better like I feel great don't get me wrong I have a balance but I would say my balance is more 50 50 than 80 20 right now um which that's okay you know it's okay um but my point here is that living in Massachusetts eating at home having like a once or twice a month outing to like go to Boston or New York and like try a new restaurant like that will be our treat versus like here it's just so easy to step out of quote unquote healthy routine so I think that the changes that I, I want to make for the wedding are going to come effortlessly they're going to come naturally they're just going to be something that's a healthy transition in our lives and I don't really see me having to do anything crazy to get to the point where I feel my best for the wedding um, in terms of like hair facials all of that like like I said like it's kind of like I just want to look like me I just want to look myself and look my my best for me. Um, I don't want to do anything different or look crazy or anything. Like even my hair, like I know I have some blonde in it and I'd probably keep it just because I do like it. Um, but I wouldn't want to do anything drastic to where I look back and I'm like, oh, that doesn't even really look like myself. You know what I mean? I'm even going to do my own wedding makeup. I've decided I'm like 99% sure just because I think that um, I want to look like myself. I don't want to look like some done up version of myself. I want to look back and be like, oh, that, like, you know, I just look like me. Okay, let's see next. Um, are you still planning to stay in LA and get engaged and married? No, no, we're not. <laughs> um, did you know your engagement was coming or were you surprised? So I was surprised on the timing because Frank had made it pretty clear to me that he didn't want to propose to me in LA. So for me, I'm thinking like, okay, well, you know, we're not moving yet. So I don't know when he's going to propose to me. He didn't propose to me in LA. So he kind of got me there. I thought he meant while we were still living here. Also, when he was planning on proposing to me, we had no idea we were moving yet. So it's like all this stuff just happened so crazily. Um, I kind of, the only reason I had my hunches is A, he told me to wear a white dress, but he played it off because he was like, because I'm going to wear a linen shirt. So I want us to match. So I was like, okay, like, you know, that's something Frank might say. Like, I didn't think too much of it. But we only had a few days in Massachusetts before I flew to Miami for swim week to spend with our families. And so what threw me off was that he planned a like two day getaway to Newport, Rhode Island, which is like an hour and a half away from our parents, um, just for the two of us. And I'm like, well, we live together all the time. Like we spend time alone all the time. It's interesting that you want to do this little like mini vacation while we have only like a few days with our parents. So that was kind of like, I. I might be a dumb bitch, but I ain't stupid. You know, I was kind of like, hmm, the white dress, that, like he was being really secretive and weird. Um, so like I had my hunches, but I still, I, at the time when we were getting to Newport, I was like thinking about it every single time. I'd be like, is he gonna do it here? Is he gonna do it now? Is he gonna do it now? But I still never like fully knew. Like I was always still guessing. So I kind of yes and no, basically. Um, 
blah 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 a lot of questions about where we're moving to um did the proposal take place at the castle hill inn yes it took place at that like little hidden lighthouse at the castle hill inn fun fact New newport rhode island is where we want to get married and it's actually one of my favorite places in the whole world because it reminds me of my mom and my stepdad they were obsessed with it they would go all the time and they would tour the mansions and it just felt so magical to them and if you guys don't know i lost my stepdad a few years ago and he was like a second dad to me he was just like the most kind-hearted like loving just selfless person in the whole world so to kind of be somewhere where it would be important to my my parents as well it just i don't know it means a lot so okay and then the next question was where did you stay and where was the actual proposal in newport so we stayed at the hydrangea house inn i believe it was called it was so cute the service was amazing it was probably on par price wise from what i assume to like those like bougie big hotels at in Newport but it was so personal they had like wine and cheese free from six to eight like the guy that ran it was so sweet they had like a four course breakfast that was included in the price they did like a um calm down service or whatever they call it where they like wind down service I don't know where they give you milk and cookies like it was just so cute it's so personal and like just felt really nice. It was a very frank place to stay. If you guys know Frankie from the vlogs, like you would know. Um, do do do. How tall are you and future hubby? My husband and I are the same height. Normalize. Normalize it, sis. Honestly, normalize it. Frankie, he claims he's one inch taller than me, um, but we. I think we're both 5'11", to be honest. Frankly, no pun intended, like, what are you gonna do? Like, I, when I fell in love with him when I was 17, I didn't fall in love with him for his height. Like, I just loved him because I loved him. So, it's not even that he's a short guy, it's that I'm a tall girl. I'm literally a, a giant. So, yeah, I'm big boned, I have wide hips, I'm, I'm tall, I'm almost six feet. So, like, if he was with some five foot two girl, he would look like a huge dude. But it's just because, compared to me, almost all men look pretty petite you know like unless you're like six foot five and above like i basically look similar size to a lot of dudes so it's not something that i like really you know whatever it's like it is what it is you know it is what it is like am i gonna wear seven inch platform heels to my wedding no no i'm not but that's just life you know does that mean that i don't wear them when i go out with my girlfriends of course i do you know um, what's the dream location of your wedding? And then someone asked, if are you guys moving to Miami? No, we're not moving to Miami. Um, my dream location. I honestly go back and forth. I have like a couple venues that I'm looking at right now in Newport. But my biggest thing is that I actually want to have a beach ceremony. And I, that changes all the time. So I really don't know. Location, I just want Newport. I want beautiful i want outdoor ceremony and an outdoor reception as well i want like i don't want a traditional tent i want more like drapes but again it's this is what i want right now and that could all change so i don't really have a dream location right now will pants be the ring beer <laughs> honestly i really want pants is our dog by the way if anybody doesn't know um he is lovingly nicknamed dinky so uh frank and i have really debated if we want to bring dink to the wedding I think he should be there because he's literally our firstborn son and at that point I assume we won't have any other children so we kind of have to bring Dink. Um, but Frank seems to think he'll bark too much, which he's valid for that, like that is true. But he's just such a sweet boy. Okay, will you guys have gold, white or yellow gold wedding bands? So my engagement ring is, yellow, uh, is white gold. Um, as much as I love yellow gold and I wear a ton of yellow gold jewelry, I thought for me personally it would be more timeless to get a white gold. Um, my mom kind of influenced me with that as well and she said that you know yellow gold is really trendy right now and you might love it in the future or you might not so maybe just go with white gold and I agree I think it really stands out I think it also like in a weird way matches the diamond I don't know if that makes sense but like the diamond to me looks cool toned so I feel like I definitely did not want any sort of yellow tinted diamond like I wanted the color to be as close to uh, clear as possible so um yeah uh, white gold, I assume. Well, I don't know about Frank because he's kind of a yellow gold guy. He's Italian, you know, they love yellow gold. Um, so he might do good, like yellow gold, but mine will probably be white gold. And um, I want my wedding band to be like a pave diamond just because I went with a really simple white gold uh, band. Um, I don't have any like any pave around it. So I really wanted to 
uh, kind of like bring that out in the wedding band. And then it's fun, you can switch it up, you can add a little more, you can add a little less. Um, so yeah, that's basically all the pressing questions, the ones that we're gonna answer for today. Let me know what topics you guys want me to do next. And if you're not following me on Instagram, I'm gonna be putting the question boxes on Instagram for you guys to ask me questions. So if you're not following me on there, go ahead and follow me if you want to, so you can be a part of the next Q&A. But I love you guys also very much. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.